What's up guys, Evil D here, and tonight's video will actually be my contribution to the hashtag campaign Esperanto Lives. Now for those who are watching this and are completely new to my channel or even my videos, you're going to be asking yourself, what the hell is that? Now I'll get into depth about the Esperanto side of that in a second, but I just want to say that Esperanto Lives is an international campaign to raise awareness about what is Esperanto um, and basically a little bit about its history and how I came to be an Esperanto speaker because it is actually a language. Now, let's, I guess, dive straight into this. So, first up, most of my real life friends, yeah, you know who you are, you guys watching me on Facebook, um, know me as Richard, but you probably just heard me introduce myself as Evil Deer. The reason being is because that's my YouTube name and that's what I'm actually mostly known as. So for those who are like, what? Yeah, I run a YouTube channel. Um, it's, a, it's a decent sized Esperanto YouTube channel um, where I basically do videos every day in Esperanto, the language, as I said earlier. So what is Esperanto? Because I've been mentioning this word a lot. So it's basically just a language. Now you're, you're probably thinking it sounds kind of European and you'd be right. Esperanto is based on European languages, based on, but it's actually an artificial language. It was designed back in 1887 by an individual. The whole idea of this language originally was to be an international language for the entire world. So it was designed to be easy to learn, easily recognizable, um, and basically neutral, like politically, because you've got to remember English is a language of an imperial power, Chinese is a language of, you know, the Chinese imperial power, etc, etc. All these languages belong to countries, so when you use these languages internationally, you're actually pushing your language internationally on other countries, but you know, that's besides the point. That's what it was originally created for. However, since 1887, a lot of stuff's happened around the world, and Esperanto has kind of grown in multiple ways, so it's developed its own culture and its own um, everything, okay, so own films, own literature, music, YouTube channels, that's what I do, everything. It's become its own international culture in a sense. Um, however, there are people who still use it for that original goal. Now, there's somewhere between like 2 million plus spe speakers around the world. No one really knows, but you know, it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, that's what Esperanto is. It's a artificial language originally, but now it's just a language like any other language around the world, but with a really unique original history, um, just how it came to be basically. So. Why did I learn this language is the next question. And the reason I learned Esperanto was actually, I found it completely by accident. I stumbled across it. I was one day in Wikipedia reading about languages, somehow ended up on this article about international languages. And it pointed to two different types of international languages in existence. Historically, all international languages have been what you call natural languages. Natural languages are languages that evolved. So English, French, Chinese, you know, Latin, Greek, all these types of languages from history. But there's a second group of languages, and these are created languages. So Esperanto falls into this group. It's the king of that group. There is actually other languages that have been designed to be international languages, but the only one that's ever made any success and actually entered the real world as a spoken language by a large group of people is Esperanto. Um, and when I read about this language, the thing that caught me was the fact that it was created originally and now it has native speakers. And I was like, that's really fascinating. And it's meant to be the easiest language in the world to learn. And I'd studied Japanese and um, French uh, when I was younger and I failed at both. But when I learned Esperanto, within about three months, I was conversing with people here in Sydney in Esperanto um, about everyday topics, even politics and religion and stuff like that. It was quite easy to do that. I needed a dictionary to look up certain words and phrases and I stumbled a lot, but I was holding conversations within three months. Something impossible in any other language unless you're like a linguophile who's just like awesome at languages, which is not me. I'm like the cookie at the bottom of the cookie jar type of thing. Um, so yeah, that hooked me. That's why I decided to learn it. And then the culture of the language, um, the people, my friends that I developed within the community, that all held me in and just basically kept me here and that's why I do it to this day. As I said, I'm now a YouTuber. I produce videos in Esperanto. It's also become part of my career. Um, so yeah, it's basically embedded in every aspect of my life. So for those of my friends who have always asked me, what is Esperanto? Now you should know. If you've got any questions, just leave me a comment below in Facebook, Twitter, you know, in the YouTube channel itself. 
it doesn't matter. Just leave me a comment and I'll try and help you out in understanding this language a bit more. Hopefully you'll start seeing these videos pop up everywhere around the world because there should be a lot coming up on the 15th. It's like this massive international campaign. I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, this will be cool. My video is literally going up on like one minute past 12 on the 15th. Um, just so I can be ahead of the pack type of thing now. Nah, but yeah, so that's the idea. And as I usually say to all my viewers on my YouTube channel, but I say in Esperanto, I'll see you all in the next video. And if you're not there, I will find you and I will infect you with my passion. <laughs>